Okay, so if we are given two functions, how can we determine if those two functions are actually inverses of each other? Well, there's a couple ways of thinking about it. First, let's think about it visually, graphically, and then we'll think about it algebraically and see the differences. So first of all, what does it mean for things to be inverses visually? Well, let's contemplate that for a second. Suppose I had a point here, let's say a comma b. Let's suppose it's way out here. So here's a and here's b. So a comma b would be right here. Now, if I wanted to undo that, what would that mean? It would mean that if I now plug in b, what should it spit out? It should spit out a. So if you think about it, sort of the inverse of that point would be to plug back b in for x, and the output should be, in fact, a. So in fact, the, sort of the, the inverse of that would be right up here. Well, what do you notice? If I have sort of a comma b, and then to undo that, I have to look at b comma a, what you see is I'm sort of just taking this point and reflecting it over to here. In fact, you can see that with a mirror. I'll try this mirror thing again. If you take a look at the mirror, there, there's the point, by the way. You can see it now pretty clearly. But now look what happens. It's just literally a reflection, he says, hopefully. I'll try to do this. Maybe not. It's sort of, oh, it's so close. Oh, this mirror was teeny bit bigger. Oh, Ooh. You see it? It's just a reflection. And where is the reflection around what line? Well, if you look straight down here, you'll see that line sort of looks like the y equals x line. It's the perfectly diagonal line. So in fact, that's exactly what happens, believe it or not. If you look at this diagonal line, y equals x, the line that cuts right through both axes halfway, what you see is if you have a point here, then the inverse would be just the flip over that. So if you have a, b, you'd now get a b, a. So graphically, two functions are going to be inverse functions if whatever the function does, if you flip that over this line, you get the other function. If that's true, then those are inverse functions. So for two things to be inverse functions, they have to have a symmetry over this flip. Whatever you do with the first function, if you flip it, you should get the second function. So that's a way to test. So let's just try an example here and see that sort of in action. Let's suppose we look at um, f of x equals 2x minus 3. And the inverse function, and by the way, I now want to introduce some new notation. So ta-da, new notation. This is how you denote an inverse function. I won't write g. I want to somehow say it's f backwards. It's f backwards. So what do you do? Well, I write the following notation, f with a little minus 1 right on top of the f like a superscript, like an exponent of x. Now I want to call your attention to a couple of quick things. These are some classic mistakes here. Classic mistake number one, oh, these aren't like real classic mistakes, like top 10 lists, but just in this, in this realm. The first thing to remember is that the notation is not this. The notation is put the minus 1 right by the f. And the second thing is do not, do not, please, please, please do not think that since it's a negative 1 exponent, I can write it as 1 over. <laughs> That's not true. Even though you may think that, because it sort of looks that way, this is just a symbol. It's just a symbol. I'm telling you, it's notation. It doesn't mean 1 over. It means inverse. So what it means, really, is that this is what undoes that function. And what we saw, or what I told you a while back, a little while ago, is that this should equal that. So let's see if these are really inverses by looking at their graphs. So let's take a look here. So this is a straight line that has y-intercept negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and slope 2 over 1. So 1 over, 2 up. 1 over, 2 up. OK, so there we go. There's the uh, first line. Now let's take a look at the second line. The second line would look like what? Well, this is going to be 1 half x 
plus 3 halves. So the y-intercept is 3 halves. So I go to 3 halves. That's 1 and a half. So, so I go right to here, 1 and a half. And then what do I do? I go slope 1 over 2. So I go uh, 1 over, I'm sorry, 2 over 1, 2, and 1 up. It should be right here. 2 over 1, 2, 1 up, and so on. If we connect those things, what does that look like? Let me actually use a purple. That looks like this. Now, let's put in that, that middle line, that y equals x line. That's where the reflection is supposed to happen. There's the y equals x line. And what do you notice? You notice, if you look at this, and you have to really sort of be like a visual kind of person, but look, if you take the red line and now just flip it over this, this orange line, do you see that we get the purple line? See, this line would get flipped to that part of the purple line, and this red line would get flipped to this part of the purple line. So these are flips of each other, which means, in fact, these are inverse functions. These are inverse functions. OK, now, how can you see this? That's graphically. How could you see this now algebraically? Well, here's the property of inverse functions. They undo each other. That was the whole point. So therefore, f composed with f inverse should just give back x. And f inverse composed with f should give back x. So these two things have to hold. These two things have to hold in order to be inverses. Let's try and see if these two things really do hold in this example. So the first thing I'm going to look at is ask f, what is f composed with f inverse? Well, let me remind you what that means. It means you take f of f inverse of x. So what is f of f inverse of x? Well, what do you do? What I do is I go to the f function, and in replace of x, I put in this new function, f inverse. So I put this in, and I insert that wherever I see an x. So I see 2, 2, times, times, x. But now I'm putting in that whole garbly gook in place of x. So garbly gook, and then minus 3. And notice that the 2's cancel. And after I cancel the 2's, I'm just left with x plus 3 minus 3, and that's just x. So that checks because I'm supposed to have that thing give me back x. So that checks. What about this way? Because this way has to hold as well. So let's try the other direction. What is f inverse composed with f of x? That's com composition. That means I take f inverse of f of x. And what's that? Well, now what that means is I take the f inverse function, and in place of x, I shove in f of x. So I've got to push that in. So I take this thing and stick it in here. And I hope that I'm going to get just x alone. So here I see an x. So I put all that stuff in there. So I see 2x minus 3. That's that x right there. Then plus 3 divided by 2. Well, minus 3 plus 3 just equals 0. So I see 2x divided by 2. And look, that equals x. So this checks. So these two functions really are inverses of each other. And I saw that visually by seeing that's just a flip over the y equals x line. And I saw it algebraically by checking that both these conditions hold. One undoes the other, and the other undoes the one. So that takes care of that. Let's try one other little example really fast together. Suppose f of x equals 2 over x plus 6. Let's see if this is really the inverse function. 6x plus 2 all over x. Let's see that using, using just uh, algebra. So what I have to do is first of all check that f composed with f inverse is equal to x. So what is that? That's f composed with f inverse. So I take f inverse and I stick it in wherever I see an x in the f function. This is going to get a little bit ugly, so let's stick together. I see 2, so I have 2 divided by x. But now in place of x, I'm putting in this entire function. So I put all this in just for x. So I see 6x plus 2 all over x. And then don't forget the plus 6, because that's just the x part, plus 6. 
All right, let's see if this works. Well, I'm going to get a common denominator here, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by x. And so what do I see? I see 2 divided by, and then 6x plus 6x is 12x. And then I have a plus 2. And the whole thing is divided by x. So I have that. And then if I now invert and multiply, I see 2x divided by 12x plus 2. Does that equal x? No, it equals 2x divided by 12x plus 2. So in fact, this is not the inverse function. This is not the inverse function. So I was able to check that by working this out and seeing that, in fact, I'm not getting just x alone. Maybe one quick last example. Just one quick last example, if I have the time. You know, I probably don't even have the time. But let me just set this up, and we'll see. Maybe I'll do it anyway. We'll see. You tell me. We'll have a vote. You know they have the votes on the web, like they take, you know, survey. Are these two things inverse functions? Well, let's look at f composed with f inverse of x. That would be f of f inverse of x. Well, that means I take f inverse and stick it in for x in this function. So that would be 2 times f inverse, which is 1 half x minus 2, and then all plus 4. You see how I just took this function, and in place of x, I just stuck that right in? Stuck it right in? Now, what does that equal? Well, if I distribute the 2, I've got to distribute the 2 everywhere. I would see 2 times a half is just 1, x. And this is a minus 4 plus this 4, and that equals x. Well, that looks good. Are we done? No, we're not done. You have to check the other way, too. So you have to check f inverse composed with f of x and see if that's going to give you x. And in fact, I'm going to let this as an exercise right now for you to try. And I'm going to call it quits for, for this lecture. I want you to try this by taking f inverse and then plugging in for x the f function and actually verifying that, in fact, this will, in fact, equal x. These two functions are inverse functions. So inverse functions, how do they look? Graphically, they're going to be sort of flips of each other over the y equals x line, because I'm switching the roles of x and y. And algebraically, I have to check these two conditions and make sure in both cases I get back to x. Try some of these carefully. See what you think about inverse functions.